Howdy everybody. My name is Rodney Clay Sutton and I am excited to be a part of this project. It's called Folk Life Home that's being sponsored by all of the fine folks at the North Carolina Folk Life Institute. It's giving a chance for traditional artists to share what it is we are passionate about and how we pass on these traditions to other people. And my passion is about percussive dance and in particular flat footing and buck dancing and clogging. I grew up in Eastern North Carolina down in the flatlands. I was born in 1950 and I started out dancing just about the time I could start walking. There was a strong tradition of square dancing, even though it was the big circle dancing that people still do up here in the mountains. And folks down there were actually doing some um, buck dancing and flat footing and clogging back in the days when I was growing up. One of my neighbors, Mr. Faison Smith, was a really good friend of Bascom Lamar Lumsford. And he, Mr. Faison and Miss Susie would spend a lot of time coming up here to the Asheville area to Buncombe County to the Mountain Dancing Folk Festival. And so I got a chance to um, see Mr. Faison who did a lot of clogging and watching him at dances growing up, dances that my dad would play at. And there would be a dance two or three times a month down there. Um, and I was just a small little boy. I was the only one of my friends and cousins that would get out as, a, as one of the boys that would get out and dance. I just loved it from the beginning. So I was very, very lucky. And then a big thing happened to me in 1972 when I was a student at East Carolina University and I happened across the performance of the Greengrass Cloggers um, on the campus there and was smitten by the energy and the um, enthusiasm and fun that those folks were having. And I ended up joining the Greengrass Cloggers in 1972 and still dancing with them. Next year, 2021 will be our 50th year. And through that association with the Greengrass Cloggers, I have met so many incredible traditional musicians and dancers over the years. And one of my favorite things to do is to share my love of this percussive dance with as many people as possible. So even with the pandemic going on, I'm still teaching some online classes through Zoom and I am leading rehearsals and workshops with the Greengrass Bloggers weekly so that we can keep our steps up to snuff and continue to um, maybe be ready for celebrating our 50th year uh, in 2021. So I want to talk a little bit about sharing this um, tradition with other people and tip my hat to two of my uh, all-time favorite mentors uh, one was, the first one I met was Willard Watson, and Willard Watson was over from um, Deep Gap, North Carolina, and we used to see Willard at the Autumn Square Up at Fiddler's Grove, North Carolina every year for the World Champion Clogging Competition, and we got to be good friends with Willard. Willard had a lot of old steps that he had learned from his family growing up and then some when he was doing some traveling, some other steps that he put into his repertoire of things that he would demonstrate. Um, he was always one of the hits at uh, Union Grove Festival and Fiddler's Grove and Willard would get up and demonstrate what he calls smooth style flat footing. So there's a big difference between flat footing and clogging. Um, clogging is usually done with taps and usually done on teams and flat footing is an individual form of keeping rhythm with your feet and being the drummer to the old time fiddle tunes. And boy, Willard and, um, and we did a chance to just watch him dance and Evelyn Farmer and some of the other great old dancers we see at Union Grove had a real big influence on my dancing over the years. And so I'll just show you just a couple of steps that Willard would do. Um, as I said, he, um, he never did a basic clogging step. He would just kind of cock his head off to the side and then all of a sudden he would just kind of jump up on his heels and go his heel, heel, toe, toe little thing he would do. 
That's what he called it. He called it walk the heel. Like you're walking up on your heels and then on your toes, going up and down. And then all of a sudden, Wilbur would just kind of scoot across the floor. And so we asked Wilbur one day, why did, what did he call that whole sequence? He says, well, you're walking the heel because when he was growing up, they would have holes in the bottom of their shoes because he would get the hand-me-downs from his older brothers. And this was in the early 1900s. And that his job was to feed the animals in the barnyard. So he'd either be on his heels or on his toes trying to make sure that he stepped in the right place to keep his feet dry. But if he made a misstep and stepped in something, he might slide across the barnyard into the barnyard slide. So Willard had great little stories like that and other steps he did. He had one he called Snake in the Grass where he looked like he was either trying to step on the snake or not step on it. And it goes... And then Willard did a step that he would call um, Ring the Chicken's Neck. And he kind of did it differently than some people, but it's kind of like a little twisting of his legs back and forth. And he had a lot of other steps that the Greengrass Cloggers learned over the years and incorporated them into some of our, our dances. He had a step that he called, um, he called it the buck and wing. And so we put it in our clogging routines and we'll do it out of basic steps. And then you just cross your foot back and forth. So you're dropping your heel to keep a sound and touching your toe in between. And I then come to learn when I was a visiting artist back in the early nineties and was teaching all of the third, fourth and fifth graders in Haywood County first, and then the next year, excuse me, in uh, McDowell County, the first two years of the program that I was in, right at the tail end of the visiting artist program. And then I got to go to Haywood County and teach all the third, fourth, fifth graders that whole county. Um, some basic clogging steps and pay tribute to, to Willard and to my other uh, favorite dancer that I learned so much from, and that was Robert Dotson from Sugar Grove, North Carolina. Now, Robert had a different approach to dancing. He was still doing flat footing, but he had a step that the Greengrass Cloggers finally deciphered and figured out what he was doing that really changed um, flat footing and changed percussive dancing from um, the South, and in particular from the mountain areas where flat footing had uh, stayed alive and flourished for all those years. And Robert did this thing that we ended up labeling the walking step. And so the green grass clogger basic step and the steps we adapted from Willard were all about going down and up to the music. But when we met Robert, he was doing something else. He was putting his foot down and lifting it going up and down to the music. And he would just walk. He would go step, step, step. And this is how we explain it to people. And then you pull your foot back and make a second sound when you pull your foot back, but you're still just walking. And then Robert had a little tricky little toe drop that he would put in the steps that made it really percussive sounding. And within this framework, you can add your heels and fill in all the spaces and make it sound like this. And then you can leave out any one of those sounds you want to leave out and make up little patterns. So those are two distinctive styles of dancing that we were exposed to. And I got a chance to stand right next to those fellows and, um, and absorb from them. Neither one of them could teach, neither one of them taught anything, but they would share their love of dance with any and everybody that they met. And so over the years, I've worked on perfecting, being able to, or as much as you can perfect it, ways in which to share this kind of percussive dancing with as many people as I can. And I'm doing it right now during the pandemic. I'm teaching some classes online. And if you're seeing this video, um, hopefully next year things will be different. But if you still are at a point where you can't get out and take classes or go to workshops and festivals, if you'll go to my website at rodneyclaysutton.com, you'll find out what I'm doing online. All of my classes are pay as you exit and you don't have to pay anything you can just participate if you've got access to zoom technology either on your phone or your laptop you can take these classes for free i'm starting a new set of classes on october 27th that'll run for five weeks 
And if you happen to see this later on, go to my website and I'll probably be doing another set of classes coming up sometime in the future. So just know that information will be there. You can join without any obligation. And um, I hope you'll come and learn more about how I feel I get to be a traditional tradition bearer of um, what I love the most, and that's about percussive dancing. So I thought I'd dance a little bit for you. I don't have any music queued up. I can't figure out how to make the video on my camera um, and the video on my laptop work at the same time. So I'm gonna dance a little um, number um, without any music. But this is a little combination of steps thrown in here with uh, Willard Watson and Robert Dotson all combined together. And I'll leave you with a little bit of uh, this flat footing called um, Rollin' Boys Rollin'. Rollin' boys, rollin', roll them on the ground. You can sell me lovin' and roll them all around. Went to see my girl last night, she came down in dinner night. She stood between me and the light and good gosh almighty. So I'm going to leave you with a little bit of a combination of some flat footing that will incorporate some of Willard Watson's steps and some of Robert Dotson's steps. And I'm going to dance it to an old tune called Roustabout. And it goes like this. Roustabout, oh Roustabout, where have you been so long? I've been around the bend with the rough and rowdy men. Now I'm coming home. Oh, baby, Popeye, 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 my little blue girl. Oh, baby, Popeye, 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 my little blue girl. When she sees me coming home, she raises her window. Yonder comes the sweetest boy that ever lived or died. Oh, baby, hop high, hop high, hop high, my little girl. Oh, baby, hop high, hop high, hop high, my little girl. When she sees me leaving again, she hangs her head and Yonder goes the meanest boy that ever lived or died. Oh, baby, hop high, hop high, hop high, my little girl. Oh, baby, hop high, hop high, hop high, my little girl. Thank you.